Now that there is a fine hack, so, well, okay, no, it's not. So basically the spark plug boot broke off. Actually, the whole top broke off. It was corroded pretty bad. And in a midst of a hurry, I wanted to hear this engine run. This is basically a parts tractor that I purchased a while back uh, to add to the other tractor that I use. I'll put a link to that video up here. But uh, I wanted to hear it run. And the boot was broken off and I just kind of zip tied it on there. And it actually worked. Uh, the engine runs. It runs okay. But I want to talk about making spark plug wires. Spark plug wires are something that some people are kind of intimidated by. Uh, and you really shouldn't be. Now, the old school wire wires on here, these are actually copper wires inside the actual wire itself. They really don't do that anymore. This is just a really old tractor that hadn't been touched in a long time. But let's talk about making spark plug wires. Now normally when you buy spark plug wires, you can buy the size for your model of car if available. So typically you would buy one for the specific engine in your vehicle. They would be cut to the right size and you would just plug and go. One end would have the boot for the distributor cap and the other end would have the boot for the spark plug. Now, as you can see here, when you buy them and they have to be made, typically they'll have one boot on them. In this case, this is the boot for the spark plug. And then you have to cut and add the other boot to the other end of the wire. Now on the old school wires, they were a copper core. They just had a copper wire in the center of them. Some of them had steel, uh, but today they don't make spark plug wires like that anymore unless you order a specialty spark plug. Basically, they're a combination of material. Here's a breakdown of how these particular wires are made. You can see there is a stainless steel path right here. Uh, there's some various types of insulation primarily designed to take the high heat of an engine. And then you can see there's a, a winding of stainless steel and then there's a center carbon impregnated fiberglass core. Now these wires advertise the dual path. And I think what they mean by that is the current can use the winding, but it can also go down the core. These are a little more uh, high performance wires than what you would normally get but for the most part they're all made about the same now the first thing you want to do is slip the boot on the wire i know that sounds obvious but once you crimp your end on the end of the wire you're not going to get your boot on so get that boot on there a little trick to that is sometimes these are really tight to get on just heat it up a little bit with a heat gun and uh, that'll make it a little more pliable and it'll slip right on if you really have to put something on here to lube it don't use water and soap you don't want to get these things uh, with any kind of water on them you want to keep the moisture away you could put a little dielectric grease around the bottom of the boot and that would probably help it slide some but they're pretty tight they don't they don't really move a lot and that's good you want a nice tight seal so once you get that on there we're going to trim the end up a little bit and what i like to do is just take a carpet knife and i like to go back quite a bit something about maybe an inch and then i just score just right around just very gently don't go all the way to the center but you want to score all the way around this rubber and then just give it kind of a twist and a pull you can see it'll come off just like that so i pretty much just scored right down to the to the white there all the way around and then i was able to twist and pull and now the wire is ready to crimp then crimping is pretty simple too but you do need the right tools to crimp these and make them work properly so you're going to need some type of crimper now this is uh kind of a combo tool it's a it's a wire stripper made by gerber and they're actually really good they're a decent tool i think i bought this at lowe's or something if i can find one online i'll put a link down below but they are cool because they strip your wires uh any size pretty quickly and efficiently but we're more interested in the crimp tool that's built into the handle and you can see down here it says auto seven to eight millimeter right there and that's because this is designed to crimp spark plug ends between seven and eight millimeter and you're going to find most automobile spark plug wires fall in that range now these work okay, but I want to use something just a little, a little more professional. What I'm going to use is an Astro crimp set. These are pretty cool. You can buy these online. I'll, again, I'll put a link down below. Uh, but they come with different dies, so you can crimp various things. And you can see that this is the one I use most of the time. It'll crimp your standard ends that you see on you know, regular wiring ends. So that's a pretty useful tool. What I like about it is it's just got a nice fat handle, and you can get a lot of pressure, and it's a ratcheting mechanism, so it won't release until you get all the way to the bottom so the toolkit we have in it or the die is made for spark plug wires and it's basically a one two three step process uh, but we're going to use just two and three we're going to crimp on two and tighten it up on three now here comes the magic everybody always says how do i crimp onto the wire well you're just going to fold it over backwards like this and then you're going to lay it inside the crimp connection 
like that. That's it. Just make sure it's laying in the bottom. And I like to leave a little of it, a little bit of it stick out like it is here. Or I like to leave more than that, but that'll be enough. And that's how you crimp. That's what makes the connection. So you're not really doing anything other than that. And then we're going to use the tool set here and um, release it, drop it in. And then you're just going to line the tool up and I'll flip it around here so you can see it better. Okay. And when you squeeze it, it's going to make a perfect crimp every time, which is what we're after. Okay, so you can see it folded it in, and it's a nice tight crimp. Then remember, there was a position um, three on here. We're going to follow it up with that. Put that in three, and it's just going to tighten it up just a little bit more. Squeeze it down, release it. And that's really all there is to it. That's There's nothing more than to put the boot back on. Now, these are bent a little bit. I like to straighten them out, make a true 90 on them. Okay, and then we'll just slip the boot back on. And now this is ready to use. It's a perfect plug, done right. It lasts many, many years, and you're ready to put it on your piece of equipment. So there you have it, some custom wires for maybe an old vehicle or an old tractor that you can't buy wires for. Don't be afraid of it. It's not really that hard. It's pretty simple once you know how. And uh, now I've got three other wires I need to do and also the coil wire. And this tractor should be, uh, well, not even close to running yet, but one step closer than it was before we started. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos. I like to build a lot of things. You yourself might find something that maybe you'll want to build.